Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. out of Dallas, Texas. Thanks for joining us. You're in Dallas. Okay. Very nice to speak to you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we get to talk about Dynasties, the landmark nature series that follows Earth's most celebrated but endangered animals. And I'd love what to know for my audience. What's it going to be t taking for these animals to survive? Um, well, that's really what the series, the series is about. Each episode follows one animal family. So there are five different episodes and five different animal families. And this is a pretty unique approach for us as filmmakers because we never normally do that. We normally, you know, something like Planet Earth 2, which I also did, or Blue Planet 2, where we take lots of little stories and look, take a global perspective. But by doing this, it allows you to really get under the skin uh, of what these animals have to go through to survive. And because it's about families, you get this wonderful internal tensions, that's why it's called dynasties, uh, because as we all know, that in every family has its own challenges, who wants to be in charge and who wants to be this and that. And so I think by, by taking this approach, you get to see, one, the challenges these animals face, not only from the, the environment and from their rivals, but also from internally with their own family. And that, I think, makes it a very connectable, very connectable story. You absolutely understand what's going through their minds when you see, when you see this stuff happen. I want my audience to know that Mike Gunton is the BBC Natural History Unit, and he's always seen approximately 120 wildlife films. Boy, Mike, that's a lot. Well, actually, that's I, I, funny enough. I saw that press release. That's out of date. It's now up to 200. So I, you know, I like to get these <laughs> things right. <laughs> um, yeah, I've done a quite. Well, I've been doing this for over 30 years, and I must say that this particular series. I think it's one of the things I'm most proud of I, because it's been, it was quite a, a risky thing to do, as you can probably imagine, trying to, you know, we spent three and a half years on this, on this project, putting all our efforts into just following, let's say, these five families. And if it had all gone wrong, we'd have no film. So it was a, there was some heart rending, you know, some heart in my mouth moments when you know, the animals disappeared or we couldn't, uh, we, we couldn't get to the, in, onto location because of the weather and all that. So, but in the end, I think all that risk's paid off because the intensity of these stories and the detail that we're able to show, um, I think, is unprecedented. I don't think I don't think anybody's ever been able to do this before uh, until now. We know that it's designed to show us the habitat, the survival of the animals. What is it going to do to the people? Is it going to be just a great show for them, or people you think will have the opportunity to say that you know I've got to be kinder to the earth? No, that's a really good point. I mean, I think. The, the drama of the, you know, these, these, are, these, of course, are observational documentaries, but they feel like drama because what goes on in the natural world is, you know, I couldn't have written scripts that were as dramatic as this. You know, what actually happens in, in nature, the truth, as they say, is, is stranger and more dramatic than fiction. But I think as well as that sort of intensity of being with these animals as they succeed and they fail and ultimately they do, all, they, these are uplifting stories in the end, but they are, they do take some, you know, they take you on quite a roller coaster ride, as I say. But I think what's really interesting and, and sort of surprising, because we never, we didn't really set out to do this, but because you see these animals, uh, the, the, the struggles through their own eyes, inevitably they, because of the way the world is in the 21st century, they eventually butt up against humanity. So you see that not only do they face challenges from the, from the, from the environment, as I say, and from their rivals and their own type, but they also, superimposed on that, face challenges from humanity. And it sort of feels unfair. You think to yourself, these, you, you, when you watch it, you think, come on, these, have, these, these guys have a hard enough life. And then humanity comes in and messes things up because they, you know, they're competing for space or, I won't spoil the stories, but you know, there's, some quite, there's some quite dramatic moments where these animals actually butt up against the challenge, uh, you know, competition with, hu with human beings. And that adds an extra, uh, an extra, excitement to it but also I think it makes it quite thought-provoking about about the this world the world today you know the nat the status of these animals in the in the contemporary world 
you have the Emmy-winning producers of Planet Earth 2 behind you, renowned naturalist Dr. David Attenborough, and now you, is this your first time working with them? I've worked with David Attenborough for 30 years. So, okay. no, this is about my, I don't know, probably about the 20th project I've done with him over the years. So, no, I'm, I've, um, I've worked with him for, for, for donkey's years. And, and, of course, he is an, in, uh, an essential ingredient in the production of this because... These are very much uh, the storytelling in these in this sh in these shows. I think is 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 completely fresh. It's um, it's very different. It's very gripping, and he is such a superb storyteller. You know, he he himself has been. You know, he's he's ninety two. He's been doing this for sixty years, but he has said to me he thinks this is one of the most interesting things he's ever done. He feels it's a very new um, way of telling natural history stories. So, you know that that's uh, that's a great uh, it's a great endorsement from him. And the other thing is, um, you know, as, as I was saying, we were saying, I worked on Planet Earth too, and um, a lot of the cinematographers who worked on that series, when they heard I was doing this series and the, the, the format that we're taking, this, this kind of single hour on one hour, they were queuing up outside the door to, shoot, to work on it because it's such a wonderful opportunity for a camera operator to spend all this time with one individual family and really get under their skin and show the real, in, what's going on inside their heads and the real ups and downs of their everyday lives. Mike, I feel your excitement, so it makes us so excited to want to watch this BBC America film. When do we get to watch it? Uh, well, it premieres this Saturday. It's the, uh, it's the 19th at 9, 9 p.m. And that's where, the, where it doesn't matter where you are in the country, it'll be on at 9 p.m. It, but it's, I think the really interesting thing as well, and BBC America are very excited about this, they were kind of roadblocking it across the whole series. So all five episodes will be on BBC America, on AMC, on IFC, and on Sundance TV. So it's going to, be, it's going to make a big impact, I hope. Um, and I do think when people watch this, they will feel that... I mean, somebody said to me when they saw it in the UK, my goodness me, this is, this is a Game of Thrones for animals. And it is, although it's, of course, all true. Thank you so much, Mike. That was so cute. A great way for me to segue and end this conversation. Thank you so very much for sharing and giving us a peek. And I can't wait till you come back and tell me how successful this is. <laughs> Thanks for being my guest on the Valder BB Show. Thanks, Valder.